Hi guys, Samantha from Dressma Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you a variation on this pendant here that I made a few years ago. Now, uh, I'm going to be updating it quite a bit. We're going to be giving it a more even shape um, and we're going to be doing lots more of these little balls on it. So let's get started. What you're going to need is some graphite polymer clay and this is Primo and this has been rolled out on my second thicker setting which is about one and a half millimeters thick. That's all you want to do. We're not going to worry about cutting out the shape just yet. Then I want you to take some ball tools and I just want you to gently run a curving line down the center. Like so. And this is just going to give us a starting point. Okay. And that's all you need to do is just going to keep everything in place. Now with that out of the way, you're going to need some colours. So all I took was a bit of Primo Green and Primo White. And what I did was I took equal amounts of green and I just put a little bit more white in some and some less white in others. It's completely random. Just mix it up as you would like. And I've done that with some blue as well. Then you're going to need some plain white and some graphite pearl. So just popping that off to the side. And now you can, if it's warm, you can roll out these balls ahead of time, pop them onto a little piece of paper, um, roll them all out, put them into little sections and then you can use them as is. But it's quite cold over here at the moment and so I find that they've been cracking a fair amount and that is something that I do not want. So I'm going to have to roll them out by hand as I use them so that they're warm enough. Uh, to work with. So the first thing I want to do is I want to grab this light green. That's the first one I want to use. And I've got a fair amount on this. Roll it in your hands to get it all nice and warmed up. And then on this curve over here I'm just going to pop it down. I'm going to take a fairly large ball tool. I'm going to press that into place. There we are. And I'm actually going to take a larger ball tool now and I'm just going to make that a bit wider. So that's a nice large one to start with. You want a few of these uh, dotted throughout. I'm going to take my darkest bit of blue now. It's a little bit less clay than before. Just warming that up considerably so that it's nice and easy to work with. And I'm going to stick another one down on this line here. Dot that in and widen that up because we're kind of creating a semi uh, coral reef here I guess if you could call it that and I'm going to take some white and I'm going to make it a fairly small quite a bit smaller than the last ones just roll it in your hand drop it on take your ball tool make sure it's a smaller end this time around and press in and you'll just continue doing this essentially uh, for as long as you want uh, just keep in mind you want to generally mold it to the size your pendant's going to be. So just keep in mind how long you want your pendant to be and stop whereabouts you want to um, cut it. So I probably want to cut around about here and here. So you want to try not to let this overlap those areas. And I'll explain that a little bit more later. Then another thing you can do is you can take really teeny tiny bits and this is what I'm going to be doing with the graphite essentially because I want it only to be a highlight. I don't want it to be um, really large pieces and I'm just going to take a piece, just pop that onto the end of my ball tool and that's just going to sit on top of others. You can put these little polyps on top of other pieces so that you create a kind of three dimensional reef look. And I'm just going to repeat this process throughout. And it doesn't need to be one long line. You can make it a little bit wider here, a little bit thinner there. You'll see what I mean as soon as I am done. So I'll finish up and show you. Okay, and there we go. So this is um, what I'm going to be using. So now the next step is going to be to give it a little bit of texture because I don't want a completely smooth surface. So I'm going to take this ball tool here. It's got a fairly small end. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow the line around these pieces with the ball tool. And I'm just going to 
go back and follow that line again as soon as I've finished and I'll just do that for a little while uh, until I feel I have enough to cut a pendant out. Now keep in mind if you don't want to do this because it can be a little bit tedious uh, you can sandpaper, use sandpaper to texture this clay before you start putting these little polyps on but I wanted to give this uh, texture first instead of the sandpaper and that will um, get rid of this line that we have from before so I'll just continue doing this all the way around and then when I finish going all the way around I will then go back and start again and just continue putting many of these lines together so that I texture the area around this okay so I've done three uh, rings of the ball tools and you can see it follows the shape really nicely so now what I want to do is I want to take a texture sponge you can use sandpaper as well and just want to go around the outside now and I want to give it a texture and the sponge really helps because it means that I can, it's um, soft and so I don't uh, mar the ball tool marks that we've made already let's just go around the outside and just give it a light texture and you can pick this up and move it to make it easier for you and just press extra hard on that area with the um, line going through it and just continue until you're happy with the amount of texture you have there we go so if I twist that around hopefully you can see what that looks like now this area you might need to go over with your finger and just smooth out that line because I could still see it after texturing and then you go back in and give it a texture and now when you're texturing you want to go very slightly over your third layer of the ball tools just so that it kind of blends it in it's not going to make the ball tool marks disappear completely but it will give them a light texture so that um, the sponge texture and the ball tools will kind of start merging together at that point like so okay then twist it around you shouldn't be able to see a lot of uh, shine on the textured area. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our blade and we're just going to, it's a curved blade so you can see, and I'm just going to curve it like so and I'm going to make a light mark because I don't want to cut just yet because we can always rub out a mark. I just want to decide how I want to cut this. Put a mark there. And the mark's fairly visible. And then just when you're cutting up the tops, I like to do a slight angle. Like so. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with how that shape's going to look. Now I will go back and I will cut it out officially this time around. Just one cut. Here's our next one. And almost there. And there we are, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I might want to just dome this just a slight bit more and dome this end a little teeny bit more. There. But there we go, that's essentially our pendant. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Now we want to put in our hole and we're just going to use a little Kemper cutter here and we're just going to find the center and we're just going to cut. So let me find the center quickly. Okay, and the center's about there. Gonna cut that out and twist that up, and there we go. We've got our hole, and now that will have distorted this top bit just a touch. So just gently press on that, 
Now you can decide whether you want to gently round these edges, like I'm going to, or you can leave them the same as they were. I don't want these really sharp edges, so I'm just going to use my blade to just gently butt up against them, and this will dull those edges just slightly. And so now we are basically ready to put it in the oven. We'll have a look at the back. It looks pretty good. It's nice and smooth. We could be baking it on a piece of paper, so that should keep it nice and smooth. And I'm just going to move that around. Gently press on it to get it to sit nice and flat on that piece of paper. And here is how that is going to look. I'm quite happy with how that looks. So I pop that into the oven for about, oh, let's say about an hour at Primo's recommended temperature. And just before we do that, I want to just go around and gently make these ball tools just a touch more noticeable. They're just, I'm not quite happy with how that looks. And then because that will have just slightly distorted our hole, I just want to go in and slice that. There we go. Just because they looked a little bit dull around that hole. Okay, so now bake that. And when it is done, we can finish it off. Okay, and so here is our piece now that it is out of the oven. And the sides, nice and clean. Back, pretty much nice and clean as well, apart from just the slightest marks here and there. But for the most part all clean so we don't need to worry about uh, sanding or adding a backing it's essentially just a one bake project which I'm sure a lot of you are quite happy about so now you can leave it just like this it is perfectly fine like this you could add some renaissance wax over it if you want I want to give it a um, shiny finish but resin is not a good option because it will clog a lot of this so I'm not going to be using resin I'm going to be using varathane so you're going to want a piece of wire, like so, and this is going to help us to dip it. If you don't have um, a can that is big enough to dip your piece into, you can just use a, a brush and just give it a generous layer, not, not thin layers. You want a nice thick layer of varathane um, and then spread that out gently with your brush so that it doesn't... Um, clock and I'll actually show you that I'm going to still dip it but I do want to show you what I mean by that so let me just find a nice brush you want a nice soft brush very thin bristles you don't want the bristles bristles peeling off or anything like that and we're going to dip that into our varathane a nice decent amount of varathane on your brush like so and then you're just going to take that and you're going to brush that over the surface like so and once you start seeing brush marks, you dip it in again and you carry on because this will dry uh, completely flat. And then you just continue doing that over the entirety of the surface. Like so. And you want to gently um, spread it. If you have pools, you gently tap your brush in and uh, get rid of those pools. And then for these parts, you want to gently tap the brush inside them. You're not going to be able to brush it, so you're going to soak your brush and you're going to tap them in. You don't want pools of it in there. You want a nice even layer and tapping does a really good job of that. And actually I'm probably not going to end up dipping this. If you want to dip it, just pop it on a piece of wire um, and dip it. But I'm going to show you how it will turn out after we have brushed it. The dipping's a lot quicker, but a lot of you will need to do it this way. So you, the trick is to basically keep your brush nice and soaked, full of that varathane, while you're working, and it will end up looking quite nice. Okay. And we're almost done. Just gently brush that over the surface. Make sure if you have any air bubbles to get rid of that. 
we do have a textured surface and air bubbles are a little bit of an issue when it comes to that. Okay, and then just go around these edges and make sure that you filled in everything. And then just brush along the sides because sometimes you'll get a little bit of everything on there. Then just lean to the side and just have a look, see if you can see any brush marks. I can't see any brush marks. Make sure that you don't have any air bubbles. Um, just one little air bubble in there. I just want to pop and tapping pops the air bubbles. And in general, that's all you really need to do. It's quite easy. It's fairly quick. Dipping's quicker, but this will work quite well. And then you will leave that to dry for at least half an hour. It takes at least half an hour to dry properly. And then when that is done, um, do the back, let that dry for about half an hour as well, and then we can string our piece. Okay, and here is our piece now that we've finished. I've done the back, you can see it's got a nice sheen to it, and the front also has a nice sheen to it. This is a very simple project. Uh, if you wanted to do something more complicated, like maybe highlight the texture, you could most certainly do that, but I'm going for a very nice, simple, easy project here that you could sell at markets for not too much, but still uh, make a profit. So, I'm going to just quickly go grab my stringing material and I'll show you how to string this. Okay, so I have two pieces of rat's tail uh, satin cord here. And so we're just going to pop them together fold them over so that we can get two loops so we're going to take that loop and we're going to pop it through the hole in our bead or pendant in this case fold over just pull nice and tight so that it's secure there we go now we'll finish off the ends with these nice silver Ends. And I'm just going to press that together. And we actually have a little bit of um, tail there. So let's put that off. Just press them together and you should be able to get it through. going to use these round nose pliers to close that because my flat nose pliers don't have a pointy enough tip to get in here. Okay, then gently pull and if it's snug enough that's good. And everything I'm doing on this end you will repeat on the other end. Just going to grab a jump ring, open that up. And let me just find my clasp quickly. Here we are. That on one end. There we go. I'll repeat on the other end. Okay, and there we go. Nice, easy finish. And so, there you go. You've got a nice, easy pendant. Very easy to create. You can do many different variations. You can change the backing. You can change the color of the little polyps. You can do lots of different little things to play around with it and have fun. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions, uh, also ask in the comments and I'll try to get to them as fast as possible. And if you would like to support this channel, please do consider becoming a patron as I have a patron community uh, that allows me to keep posting videos on this channel every single week. You also get exclusive videos for joining Patreon. You also get discounts to my Etsy shop as well. So please do consider checking that out as that is super helpful to me. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.